A vector space is a collection of vectors that comes with a bunch of conditions. Vectors are what form the basic building blocks for linear algebra. In mathematics, a vector is a directed line segment with its tail rooted at the origin and its head pointing towards a certain direction. Typically, the head of such an arrow in a two-dimensional plane is denoted by a single point and a pair of numbers, the x-coordinate and the y-coordinate. Taken together, such a collection of vectors is called a vector space. In a vector space, if we add any two random vectors, then the resulting vector must also be a part of the same collection of vectors. Besides, if we multiply any random vector by any scalar, then all the resulting vectors must again be a part of the same collection of vectors. Also, for any random vector with a certain magnitude and pointed towards a certain direction, there must exist another vector with the same magnitude but pointed towards the exact opposite direction. We call this vector the inverse of the other vector. When we add a vector to its inverse, we get a special kind of a vector called a zero vector. A zero vector has zero magnitude and does not point to any direction. Adding a vector to a zero vector leaves it unchanged. This is what the graphical representation of the given set looks like. Every point on this line is a vector. If we replace all these points by pointed arrows with their tails at the origin and their heads at the points on the given line, then we end up getting a graphical representation of the vectors that form this line. By joining all these arrow heads, we get the graph of the given set. Out of all the vectors that form this line, Let's randomly pick any two of the vectors. The sum of these two vectors gives us a third vector. This new vector, however, is not a part of the line that represents the given set. In other words, the sum of any two random vectors in the set may not be a part of the given set of vectors. So vector addition for the given set is not closed. And so the given set does not form a vector space. This is what the graphical representation of the given set looks like. Every point on this line is a vector. If we replace all these points by pointed arrows with their tails at the origin and their heads at the points on the given line, then we end up getting a graphical representation of the vectors that form this line. Adding any two of these vectors or multiplying any vector by a scalar gives us another vector from the same collection of vectors. The origin through which the graph passes serves as the zero vector of the given set. For any random vector with a certain magnitude and pointed towards a particular direction, there exists another vector called the inverse of the given vector with equal magnitude but pointed towards the exact opposite direction. Adding any vector to its inverse brings us back to the origin. So the principal conditions that form the skeleton of a vector space are satisfied by the given set. The other conditions can also be proven similarly. So the given set does form a vector space. Let's say we have a vector space over some field. If a part of this vector space is also a vector space over the same field, then we say that this smaller vector space is a subspace of the bigger vector space that it's a part of. Out of the millions of vectors that R3 contains, let's choose exactly those vectors which satisfy, say, this condition. Let's pack the collection of all these vectors into a set, say W. What we now wish to find out is if the set W forms a subspace of the vector space R3. Let's find out. The primary condition for a subset of a vector space to be a subspace of that vector space is that the subset contains the zero vector of that vector space. In our example, the set W is a part of the vector space R3. But is the set W a subspace of R3? Well, not really. Well, that's because the zero vector of R3 does not satisfy the given condition. And therefore, the zero vector is not a part of the subset W. Therefore, W is not a subspace of R3. 
Let's take another example. We consider the vector space R2 and a subset W of R2. Let's find out if this subset is also a subspace of R2.